This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week zero is here. College football is back, and it is time to once again talk some college football here on Covering the Spread, and who better to do that for us than Dr. Ed Fang of the Power Rank. We're going to get him back here on today to break down week zero and get you ready for the start of the 2023 season. This is Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and over on FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a digital media managing editor for FanDuel Research, joined here as mentioned by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com. Check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank and Ed. College football is back. That is so sweet to say. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm really looking forward to the college football season. A little Notre Dame versus Navy uh, across the pond. And yeah, it should be awesome. Looking forward to a week zero. I was going to wear my uh, hat from Dublin last year, but I've still got the Northwestern gear in timeout for. I guess indefinitely. I don't know. We'll figure out when it can be revived. Like the bobbleheads are up here, but like the hat seems like too much. So even though it has like the Dublin logo on it, so I could celebrate that way. I feel like I need another like month or two before we slowly put the purple back on. I feel like you can put the purple back on late September. Okay. For sure. So I would say first win, but that might mean 2024. So (laughs) It's we'll determine the timeline eventually. We can we can, yeah. we can have a wager on whether they're going to win a game this this year. I can have the the under on uh, point five uh, personally. I'll uh, I'll I'll skew that direction. We have a little side bet. We can talk about that after the show. Very happy they waited until I moved back to Chicago to become a total poop show. So that's a uh, true delight <laughs> right there. Luckily, we're focusing on happier things this week. Notre Dame, as you mentioned, playing Navy uh, over in Ireland. We've also got USC in a game taking on San Jose State this week. And we'll talk about those games specifically. We're going to break down Ed's betting model for college football for listeners who may be new to the show and also maybe talk some future before we get into week zero all coming up today. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Talking more EPL tomorrow with Austin Cass. Uh, getting ready for match week number three. JJ Zacharyson talking season-long player props with us on Friday here on the show. And all these shows go up not just on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, but also on the FanDuel YouTube page and over on FanDuel TV+, Plus, which you can now get on desktop mobile by going to FanDuel.com slash watch. So if you don't have... Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku. You can now watch FanDuel TV Plus. Uh, getting up and Adams there. Just watch the FanDuel account uh, by going to FanDuel.com slash watch. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24 24- Seven support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 8 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. NFL Sunday ticket offer ends 9 18 23. No refunds. Terms and embargoes apply. $100 off NFL Sunday ticket, not YouTube TV. YouTube TV base plan required to watch YouTube TV. Redemption requires a Google account and current from a payment. Commercial use is excluded. 
Now let's dive in here to college football week number zero and get kind of a broad umbrella based discussion here going first, because Ed probably got some new listeners, uh, first time college football listeners here on the show. So I wanted to go talk holistically with you. You've got your college football betting model. What's the spine of that model and how does it kind of work from a broad perspective? Right now we're in the preseason and the main component there is uh, a market model. So my code takes market win totals and it will back out a rating uh, for each team. So for example, um, you know, if uh, Georgia's at the top of those numbers right now, I think they're about 30 points better than FBS average. So uh, the model essentially says there that um, if Georgia were to play an average FBS team, they would be, uh, you know, on a neutral site, they would be predicted to win by 30. So, so the real, you know, the thing there is like, you know, you have to back out that rating from the win total. And that obviously depends on what each team's schedule is. So that is worked into there. And then obviously all the win totals are connected and you need to account for that as well. So things have to change together. And yeah, I've found that to be a really powerful predictor. Uh, my model always does pretty well in the first uh, couple of weeks of the season. Actually, that that alone um, does pretty well the first couple of weeks of the season. So I look to that to give me a sense for um, you know what what the spread should be in these early season games, and then we do a little handicapping on top of that because college football is a difficult market to beat, and we go from there. I feel like the benefit of having that market model is especially apparent, you know, in these years where we got the transfer portal across college football and a market will probably be better able to encapsulate that than a player level model or than anything except for a player level model. But like realistically running a player level model for every FBS team going to be pretty tough. So I feel right. like the advantage of your method is even bigger nowadays than it would have been previously. Correct. For sure, the transfer portal information should certainly be in uh, in in those market win totals, right? So if uh, if the market is off on a team uh, because they're underestimating the impact of some transfers, some high level transfers coming in, um, then then the, the market should be able to account for that and actually have a pretty good estimate. I think a really good example of that is uh, Colorado. So this is a team that was awful last year, and then Deion Sanders has come in now. And really done a pretty interesting thing in eliminating all of the team. So, you know, it used to be that if you had eight transfers, that was like a big deal. And how do you account for that? Well, there's 50 transfers, uh, you know, on this 85 man roster. And that's a huge, huge change. So how do you account for that? Like anytime you actually run some models based on how Colorado has done over the past four years. So that's, you know, simple things that I've done in the past on my site. You're going to get an answer that Colorado is going to be really bad this year. But that's not what the markets think. Uh, you know, betters have bet up that Colorado win total. Um, I, uh, I don't remember exactly what the number is. But when you back out their rating and you look at their rank over 133 teams now in FBS, you know, Colorado's in the 80s somewhere. So they're like 80th. And that's a number that's kind of hard to come up with if you're just doing right. the math. Um, it, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to come up with. Uh, because of just all those changes. It's kind of an unprecedented experiment. So that's just one example of the, the power of, of using the markets here. And uh, it is going to account for that. And Colorado is an example. Uh, they are the most pertinent example we've seen in a very long time, obviously, with regards to the advantage of that. Now, you mentioned that Early in the season, the market-derived model will be the way to go. It's a very successful model and stuff like that. Throughout the year, obviously, you're going to shift to factoring in in-season data. So when you're looking at in-season data, Ed, if someone's trying to analyze college football, obviously not now, but like down the line, what data do you use to form like the statistical level model, uh, obviously without giving away everything, but like, you know, what yeah. data are you focusing on that you think matters when analyzing college football once we actually have some of that data? For sure. And this will start after week zero. I'll start adjusting some of these teams, you know, because, uh, you know, a team like Hawaii is going to play week one after playing a week zero game uh, against Vanderbilt. I'll start making those adjustments immediately. It's all the usual suspects that that we've been talking about on the show for a long time. S simple things, uh, things as simple as margin of victory in games, things a little bit more complicated, like success rate on offense and defense. 
yards per play is something that goes in there. And and I use a little bit of market data in there, these closing point spreads as well. So that all goes to update uh, this college football model. It'll start week zero, right after week zero. Like my predictions for week one will look different for those teams that played uh, week zero. So, uh, yeah, it updates. And you have to update pretty quickly. Uh, things change in college football. I remember uh, seeing a couple bookmakers last year post, you know, the teams that were 10 points different in their ratings from their preseason uh, expectation. And there were a lot of them and yeah. because that happens and, you know, we'll see who, what examples will be this year of who falls or, or who rises, you know, who gets a, a player that just uh, ends up being unbelievable and really elevates the program. Well, um, speaking so of you, you need to make those changes. And, and I do do that in my numbers. Speaking of potential changes, let's talk about this first game in week number zero. It is over in Dublin. We have Navy taking on Notre Dame. Notre Dame right now, 20 and a half point favorite. Total here is 49 and a half. Notre Dame uh, dipping in the transfer portal to get Sam Hartman as their quarterback for this year. So before we talk about this game specifically, Ed, what is your broad outlook for Notre Dame heading into 2023 with their new quarterback? I think Notre Dame is a is a pretty high variance team. I think, uh, you know, we, we know Sam Hartman was very good at Wake Forest. They were actually fifth when you look at passing success rate adjusted for opponent. That's excellent. Uh, he was really good. They put up a lot of points. He decided to go to a bigger program, and he's he's certainly going to elevate uh, the, the, the passing offense, even though the passing offense kind of wasn't as bad as, as the perception was last year. Marcus Freeman is entering his second year as the head coach. The first year had its ups and downs. Uh, he had some injuries at the quarterback position. The defense wasn't as good as as it was when he was coordinator. So so that was an issue too. Um, there's a lot of pieces on defense. Um, there's a lot of blue chip prospects at the receiver position for Hartman to throw to. I kind of see this as a pretty high variance team. Um, you know, if Hartman's great and Marcus Freeman can really figure out a lot of things in year two as a head coach. Uh, I feel like this team could be really good. Obviously the schedule is really hard. They have a game against Ohio state, normal games against USC, uh, a lot of ACC competition, Clemson. Uh, but, but I think if you're a fighting Irish fan, you have a lot of reasons to be optimistic this, this upcoming season. Yeah, the word high variance can sometimes be taken with a negative connotation, but high variance can be good if it means you can hit the high end of a range of outcomes. And I think that sure. having better quarterback play is what can, could allow Notre Dame to do that. Now, in this game, 29 point favorites in Dublin taking on Navy. What's your read on how you see this game playing out, Ed? Right. So my model actually has this uh, Notre Dame by almost 22 and a half. Uh, I do think Notre Dame is the right side here. Navy is uh, parted ways with a longtime coach. They promoted the defensive coordinator um, as their new coach. A team that really struggled on the offensive side of the ball was decent on defense last year, but still not. They were a lot better against the run uh, than they were against the pass. And, uh, you know, it was a unit that was 78th when I look at passing success rate adjusted for opponents on that Navy defense. Uh, I think it, is a unit i mean they do bring a lot of their secondary back so it could get better but probably not a unit that can deal with the athletes that notre dame is going to bring uh, i think sam hartman is probably going to be pretty pretty awesome in this game um to show that uh you know that that he really is the guy here so i do think this is one that notre dame um can run away with and uh i actually like them on the side here all right, and that side is, as mentioned, Notre Dame, 20.5-point favorites at FanDuel Sportsbook. The 20-and-a-half is minus 110 as of right now. Other game we want to focus on here for week number zero is San Jose State taking on USC. USC is a 30.5-point favorite here. Total is 66-and-a-half. And we talked about USC a couple weeks ago, Ed, and you said they would be an over team this year due to their rough defense, but also because of Caleb Williams. Now, that can work two ways, because if you got Caleb Williams, it's easier to cover a large spread. It's easier to cover a large spread when the total is super high, but it also may be tough to keep the opposing team off the board, which is required to, to cover a 30 and a half point spread, too. So when you look at this defense... Do you think that they're capable of covering a 30 and a half point spread uh, with the defense the way it is, or is the offense good enough to justify that big of a number? I really don't know. I think there's so <laughs> many questions about this USC defense that was like awful. I think they were in the nineties when you look at success rate adjusted for opponent. Uh, they actually were able to create a lot of turnovers early in the season. And that made them seem a little bit better 
than they were. And then, you know, the UCLA game happened. And I mean, they were just, I mean, it was, it, that was kind of the, one of the most unbelievable Ole defenses that I've, that I've ever seen. They were really, really bad. And, um, yeah, I mean they have a lot of they have a lot of questions that that they need to answer. I'm I'm kind of not betting USC until we get some early returns on the defense. Uh, my model has uh, USC by 32 points here. I'm gonna wait to see uh, how the defense performs. Um, I really don't know. I I think they they could be better. Uh, you know, I mean if 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 it's a top 25 unit, which is I think unlikely given where this unit's coming from. Uh, they could be certainly national championship contenders with what they do on the offensive side of the ball. More realistic, like can they get the FBS average from the 90s? I think that's probably more realistic. And um, so, yeah, I, I don't really know what to think of it. Uh, another thing about this total, I think it seems a little bit low to me. Uh, I actually don't have a model for totals right now. It, it seems a little bit low, but I, I don't think USC overs are quite um, – quite the the automatic bets that a lot of people think they are uh you know lincoln riley will run fast and, and put a lot of offense up when in the first half when the, when the game is contention the offense tends to slow down a little bit in the second half he's not really uh looking to put more points on the board when the game is out of question and that makes some of these these i mean you know this is not exactly the highest total of the world but um don't don't auto bet the usc over i think you need to have uh a better reason than that simply because of this, this, these kind of pace changes that, that Lincoln Riley does. So I would be cautious about that. Yeah. I think that's important to consider is what they do when they're up big, when the, the spread is 30 and a half. And that is the case here. And other thing to consider is let's say hypothetically the game is closer in the second half uh, where they could run that high pace. That probably implies the offense wasn't doing a whole lot in the first half. So there are multiple paths to an under here, which means I agree with you where even though it does seem a bit light at six, six and a half, it may make sense to stay away, get more data. Same thing with the spread there at 30 and a half, uh, even though you are showing value there, potentially holding off and seeing uh, what more we can get with regards to USC. Now, this is week zero, Ed, so we're going to get some data here for this week. We'll get some uh, some games for week one next week as well. But it's also our final chance to lock in any futures before we get to the 2023 season. So when you're looking there, uh, anything you're trying to lock in at this time over FanDuel Sportsbook? One thing I've been looking at, one thing I've actually bet is uh, a Heisman bet. I like the Cam Rising, the, the quarterback at Utah, and this, this guy has been in- – incredible uh you know two years ago charlie brewer the transfer from baylor started the season and he was kind of bad and cam rising took over and really led that offense uh really kind of revitalized that offense and um 2022 he was also pretty good when you look at the numbers uh there the utah's pass offense was 13 when i look at 13th in the nation when i look at passing rate adjusted for strength of schedule he's also a threat with his legs uh, he's run for over 400 yards over the last two seasons. I think that, okay, so he hurt his knee in the Rose Bowl, and I've been following that all off season. He's still questionable for this opening game against Florida. I think that's part of the reason you've seen that spread drop a little bit in week one. If Cam Rising were perfectly healthy, I would bet him 30-1 to 1 to win the Heisman. I think he's that good of a player. I bet him, I think I got 65 to 1 on FanDuel. I think that's the number I got it at at FanDuel. So that's that's a bet that I have from a month ago, maybe a little bit more. I really like him as a player. I really like what uh, you know, the, some of the pieces that he has on the offense. You're really getting a discount right now at 80 to 1 because of this injury. And now I I and I think like, you know, he might be a little bit quite he's he is listed as questionable right now. They're still bringing him back. I got to think he plays against Florida. That's such a big game to open the season and you're getting a discount right now. So, um, you know, I still like this bet Cam Rising to win the Heisman. I think you're getting a discount because of the injury. And I think that the benefit there too, is if he does play for that game, that's probably one of the bigger higher profile games across week one in college football. So if he does play, that can be like your spotlight moment right away to begin that momentum of winning an award like this media, which is a, a very important thing to have. Absolutely. Yeah, I know it's a huge game and, and they're going to have a lot of, uh, you know, they're going to have USC on their schedule a little bit later. They're going to have their, their chances to shine. Um, I know how 
a little bit crazy what, what it's like to think uh, that a Utah quarterback is going to win the Heisman, but rising really is that good. Right. And that team is good too, which matters for this kind of yep. award as well uh, to keep them relevant throughout the year, uh, keep them in games and keep their games being important and uh, getting national attention. Okay. So Cam rising 80 to one. Ed is liking that right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's all we have here for week number zero, but Ed will be with us every single week here on Wednesday, talking college football with on Thursdays as well, talking NFL. So Ed, it is back to have you with us twice per week here on the show. Once again, if people want to find your work, find some five nuggets Saturday, anything else, where can they find all that? Yeah, thanks, Jim. I mean, you can find uh, my newsletter at thepowerrank.com. Uh, I do do Five Nuggets Saturday, which basically, if you're looking for some action any given weekend, uh, that's your place to go. It comes out 10 a.m. every Saturday. And uh, so check that out at thepowerrank.com. You can also get a lot of my content on the Football Analytics Show in audio form. That's my podcast. I've decided this year uh, to put like the newsletters that make sense. Uh, Five Nuggets Saturday is a little bit too time sensitive to put on there. But uh, the newsletters that make sense to go in an audio format uh, will also go on the podcast. So I'm pretty excited about that. You know, I'm just trying to make it easier for people to consume uh, what I have to say, uh, whether you want to read or, or listen. So check out the Football Analytics Show. That's my podcast. All righty. Find that uh, by searching for the Football Analytics Show. Check out Ed's work at thepowerrank.com and find him on Twitter at the Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also find Fandle Research by searching for at Fandle Research. Back with you once again tomorrow to break down EPL match week number three. This has been covering the spread right here on the Fanduel Podcast Network.